Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This is going to be kind of a quick one, but I've been doing a lot of experimenting with the uh, new Zen 4 based APUs from AMD and you know, we're getting a lot of them in handhelds and a lot of many PCs are on the way. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful APU that I've tested so far. Now we've actually taken a look at this same one on the channel, but we haven't been able to kind of max it out like we are in this one. This is the Ryzen 9 7940HS and I can run this at 100 watts, which is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to an APU. This isn't something that I recommend you do, but I really wanted to push this to the limit to see what we could get out of this thing, and uh, performance is absolutely amazing. We were also able to overclock the GPU on this, which usually runs at 2800 megahertz up to 3000, which does offer a little bit of a boost in uh, GPU performance. But overall, just across the board, this thing is putting down some power. If you're not familiar with this 7940HS, basically what we have here are 8 Zen 4 cores and 16 threads. It's got a clock up to 5.2 GHz, built-in Radeon RDNA 3 graphics known as the Radeon 780M. We've got 12 CUs, and I've overclocked this to 3000. It usually runs at 2800 MHz. And as for RAM, I've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600. Really wish I could get this to run a bit faster, but uh, we're kind of locked right there at 56. But it is dual channel RAM, so we can extract the most performance out of this setup. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a few different GPU benchmarks because, you know, one of the main things that I like to focus on with these are those built-in graphics. We've got that new 780M based on RDNA 3, and overall, with the handhelds and all of the mini PCs we've seen so far, it's a great performer but we've never been able to push it this far. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So I've got core temp up. It's just really easy to kind of show you that total package power right here. And uh, by the way, with the newest drivers, I could not get hardware info to work. So uh, we're kind of working without that. But if I put a load on the CPU and GPU at the same time, you can see this jumps up to around 95 watts. The TDP is set at 100 and I've seen it boost up to around 105. But it doesn't mean, you know, while we're gaming, it's going to use 100 watts. Basically, what this means is if it needs to go that high, we can definitely do it. And uh, with this RDNA 3i GPU maxed out at 2800 megahertz, it can pull around 38 watts all by itself. So we've got plenty of power here across the board. Now, the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some GPU benchmarks, and I personally like using 3D Mark. First on the list, we've got Night Raid coming in with a 31,383. And if you take a look at the chart, you can see that that iGPU is right there at 3000 across the whole benchmark. Next up, we've got Fire Strike, and I thought we'd get a bit better with this one. 7,188. Still, I'm not shrugging at it because we're only working with integrated graphics. And finally, Time Spy with a 3,240. Some of the best scores I've seen out of an iGPU so far, but these are synthetic benchmarks, and now I want to show off some real-world gaming. First on the list, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, just the built-in benchmark. I'm using recommended settings, and you can go with visual quality or performance. I went with performance, so it is going to drop that resolution down either using FSR or resolution scale. Base resolution is 1080p, and with this, we got an average of 116 and a low of 76. Next up, we've got Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p low settings with no resolution scale. So I'm not using any kind of RSR or anything like that, and we could get a lot more out of it if we went with RSR. But by the end of this run, we had an average of 75 FPS, maximum of 100, and a low of 46. This did way better than I thought it would, and I know I'm running the benchmark here, but I did get into some gameplay, and it's really smooth. We can lock it down at 60 FPS. Here's Borderlands 3, 1080p with a low medium mix. Every once in a while, it did get down into the mid-60s, but I never dropped under 60 with it. By the end, we had an average of 78 FPS, and I'd say this is pretty good. We could turn V-Sync on, set it to medium, and have a great time, or use Radeon Super Resolution with these RDNA 3 graphics. Now remember, all of the games that we tested can use that. And basically, with that enabled, we could run these games at 720p, and then Super Resolution will the upscale Norm them to 1080. They still look great, but we're only putting a load machines. on the PC or whatever we're running this on at kind of a 720p setting. Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, medium settings. We got an average of 83 FPS. Further down river, we'll find a herd of machines. And I will teach you how to... Are they dangerous? And of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low settings, got an average of 74 FPS out of this one, 
Another one that just gives these little APUs a run for its money, but with these new RDNA 3 graphics paired up with Zen 4 cores, we're getting some amazing performance out of everything, especially at these higher wattages. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Kind of wanted to get this out of the way. I've been doing a bit of tweaking and tuning with this as much as I can, given that we've kind of got a lockdown BIOS here. I've been using third-party apps like APU Tuning Utility and such. I do need to test out a few more things, and I'd love to check out some high-end emulation at higher resolutions. Uh, one that really struggles, even now with these more powerful APUs, is Xbox 360 with the harder-to-run stuff, like the original Red Dead Redemption game. I think we could get 60 with this setup like this. We just can put enough wattage to get those clocks on the CPU and GPU up to where they need to be. If you've got any questions, or if there's anything else you want to see running on this platform, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.